Does iRating equal real life speed? We're about to find out. Windward Racing invited my sim racing team, the Moradness M Squad, out to the MSR Houston racetrack to test the Mercedes AMG GT4. And it presented us with a very unique opportunity. We had the chance to find out if sim racers can drive a real race car. Now, the obvious answer to that is yes, but can they do it well? And are they as quick as they are on the sim? There were no lap times recorded from the data systems in the cars, and the guys weren't told how fast or slow they were, so they wouldn't try to one-up each other. But I still extracted some lap times based on the onboard videos in the car. This got me thinking, does being a highly rated sim racer mean that you're gonna be a fast driver in real life? These guys only had two to three laps of lead and follow behind me, and then they were turned loose in the afternoon to run about three or four laps on their own with no lead car. To try and maximize the potential lap time, I didn't use the start finish line as the reference point. I used a marker on the back straight of the track just before the pit entry because I felt like their lap time stabilized a little bit more and it gave them more of an opportunity to run and get more comfortable. So it was a more accurate representation and example of their speed. Let's start with my reference lap that I set in the morning when I was warming up the two cars that the guys were gonna be driving during the day. Keep in mind, it was also my first time at the track and those are my first laps around the track. So aside from those sighting laps we turned in the morning in some road cars, we're all on equal terms in terms of how many laps we've turned. Obviously, me having the experience of being a racing driver. After we see the reference, we're going to watch the sim races go around, starting with the lower end of the rating system and working up to our top rated driver in the squad, who's over 8,000 I rating. So here's my lap in the morning, warming up the cars. This is my final lap. So we just started here and um, the track was a little bit damp. Sorry for the overexposure didn't really have the camera settings dialed in correctly. But, um, you know, using all the knowledge I have from driving cars <laughs> for my career, uh, I'm able to be really comfortable and relatively get close to the limit. Obviously, taking it easy in the brake zones, that's probably the point where it's the most dangerous. Just if you miss your break point and you're in over the limit, then it's hard to really correct. So kind of breaking up towards that, that limit. It's a really tricky section where you go light over a crest. All through here is really low speed, really Mickey Mouse style, you know, just trying to push it into like a front limitation. Really trying to feel where the grip is. You can see me sawing the wheel. Track is a little bit damp. You can see the edges. It was raining in the morning, so um, the track does get drier and drier. In the afternoon, obviously, it was full dry. You'll see that in, uh, in the videos that when the sim racers are driving. I made a, a TC adjustment, traction control adjustment. I just felt like uh, there was a little bit too much slippage. Low grip scenario, a little bit of dampness, so I went with uh, setting seven, so it actually helped a little bit with the rear. And this is my reference lap. My reference lap was a 137.42. We're gonna start with our first I racer from the Moradness M squad, Dan Willis. He's rated at 1.7K I rating. And just to give you a reference point, the average across the entire service is 1.5. So this is just above average. And let's see what he can do behind the wheel of the Mercedes AMG GT4. Dan about to start his lap. Let's see how he does with the first corner here on the reference lap. So already you see the difference in speed and certainty behind the wheel. You can really tell that he's searching and not quite comfortable, really looking uh, close in front based on the line. You can see how tight and narrow it was. Once we get into the straight, he's feeling a bit more confident pushing the gas. It's nice to see actually how comfortable he is to build the speed. So right away, I mean, the minimum speeds are quite different. Uh, a lot more uncertain, obviously. But nice again to see him really open it up and push the throttle. This is not an easy section, it's very bumpy. Up over the crest, really taking it easy. But placement and, uh, and line is actually quite good through here. 
and a little bit unsure. Uh, you know, safety first for the birds. Notice that he uh, he took care of that. But again, just really easy with it back and forth. Um, I mean, it's tough because the slower you go, the more tire temp you lose. And when the tire temp goes down, it gets even harder to drive. And on a cold day like this, that we experience randomly in Houston, which is never cold, uh, it's tricky. You have to really push. And getting that brake temp, you know, he's feeling more confident now. Really actually carried in some good speed to the section, which is not easy. You know, with, you can look at just Dan sawing on the wheel, trying to find where that grip is. It's, it's actually good. You're really trying to feel where the grip is. And now across the line, that's his reference. That was Dan Willis's reference lap. It was a 158.22. That's 20.8 seconds off the pace that I set in the morning. And although it seems like a lot of time, it actually isn't that bad. You can actually chip away at that time pretty easy. And you have to think with only about six or seven laps total on the day to be able to pull a lap time like that off is actually not bad. It, it was tricky. The conditions were tough. It was very cold. So I'm taking all those things, things into account. And uh, all in all, um, I think that with just a little bit more time, I mean, even five more laps, I think someone with a skill level or a, an experience level like that would benefit from a few more laps, just getting more comfortable behind the wheel. And I think without a doubt, he could drop his lap time by another 10 seconds if he had maybe five to 10 more laps. Although we had 16 sim racers there, we could only take a few examples. And I just felt like I took the average of everyone at their specific I rating level. So we're gonna take a step forward now and move on to our next driver, Mitchell Johnson. He's at around 3.5K IR. And I wanted to make that jump up just to see the level of lap time if there's gonna be a big difference. So let's take a look at this lap. Here we are with Mitchell Johnson, our next driver, just crossing that reference point, which is that black piece of tarmac, that patch. Already you see that there's a little bit more confidence behind the wheel, more entry speed. He's still searching kind of like where the line is. And you can see the inputs are very uh, darty. It's the best way to explain it because I feel like it's an overwhelming experience. Down a gear, which is a little bit too slow through that last sector, but it is tricky and really high speed with a pit wall there. So I don't blame him. Um, down to first gear, which we never really use in the GT4, except for if it's a hairpin like in Detroit or Long Beach, for instance. But up through the gears, really confident through this section, really bumpy. You can see how aggressive it is. A lot of entry speed here over the crest. Mitchell, just to give you a little background, is um, a, an off-road truck driver. So he does like Baja 1000 and stuff like that. So he does have a little bit of experience behind the wheel of a racing vehicle. You can see how he's just tossing it around. So he is pretty confident and comfortable. Although he's only 3,500 I rating, you can see his comfort level behind the wheel. Just wheeling it, catching a little bit of oversteer on the exit. We like to call that Thunderfoot, uh, but just pulling the gears. I love that he's revving out the engine. He's running it on the pipe, that's for sure, as he likes to call it. Run that thing on the pipe. Carrying the speed in. Now just taking it a little bit carefully <laughs> through the last section and heavy on the throttle to close out the lap. That was Mitchell's lap. Actually quite a big jump forward in terms of pace compared to Dan Willis. So you'd expect that from 1.7K I rating up to 3.5K. That's a really competitive bracket, that 3,000 to 4,000 range. So 10 seconds quicker, roughly, ran a 148.55. So about 11.1 .1 seconds off of my pace. Pretty decent. Again, only six or seven laps to go off of. And um, with Mitchell's experience behind the wheel of some off-road trucks, uh, I was expecting his pace to be reasonable. And he showed that. He was comfortable behind the wheel and uh, even catching some oversteers which uh, made him probably feel right at home. Um, but let's take a look 
into our next driver, Zach Deus. He is uh, a 4,000 I rating driver. So a little bit higher, still in that same sort of bracket. Let's see how quick Zach goes. So now we're on board with Zach Deus. He's a 4,000 I rating driver. Just crossing the reference point now to start the time. And already you can see that his lap is a little bit more timid versus even the first lap from Dan Willis with a 1.7K I rating. And Zach did mention that he just wanted to take this experience in, but you'd expect a little bit more comfort behind the wheel. So it doesn't always mean because your I rating's higher that you're gonna be good behind the wheel. And everybody takes a little bit of a, a different approach to it. When there's real danger involved and you can actually hit something and not reset, your whole perspective changes. So when you're behind the wheel of a sim, and you're driving, it's a lot easier. You can push those limits and you just hit the reset button. But here in real life, there are no reset buttons or the reset is very expensive. And I don't think any of these guys were willing to take that chance to you know, mess around and find out. So you can see even through this section, just a lot more gentle, really smooth, not even close to the limit through this carousel corner. Normally, when, you, when you're on the limit, you'll really see the wheel being um, sawed a little bit just to kind of feel where the limit of adhesion is. So Zach just taking this experience in, such a cool opportunity. I mean, you guys could probably agree with that. It's just an amazing chance for all of these guys to drive a real race car. It doesn't happen. In, you know, this just, it doesn't happen to <laughs> sim racers. You don't get this opportunity to get um, the chance to drive a real race car coming from Sim. So really bring that speed down. And I want you guys in the comments to even just chime in on some of these laps. I want you, I want you to kind of run us through and, and um, give your feedback on what you're seeing as well with all these laps. So there it is. Zach crossed the line and that's his reference lap. Zach's lap, a lot more tentative, as you saw, and the lap time reflected that. It was a two minute, nine second point three seven. That's 31.9 seconds off my reference point. And I already mentioned this during his lap. He, he did just want to take in this opportunity. I don't think he really felt like he wanted to get close to that limit, but this is our first interesting point in the video where lap time doesn't actually line up with I rating across the chart. So Zach actually drops to the bottom of our list amongst the drivers that we took a sample from. Of course, we had 16 drivers there, so we couldn't really uh, take a lap time from every single one. Quite a few were in the lower range at around you know 1,000 to 2,000 I rating. And as you would typically expect, nothing really, nobody jumped out at that specific range in terms of speed. They were more or less in line with what Dan was running. So um, Zach just um, taking that experience, but the lap time really didn't line up with, with how he drives behind the wheel of his virtual race car. Now, moving on to our next driver. This is another big step forward. This is uh, Wayne Castile, 5.5K I rating. Let's see how he does behind the wheel of the GT4. So here we are with Wayne Castile, 5.5K I rating. Big jump up, just crossing the timing reference point. A lot of speed into this first bend. Right away, you can see that level of confidence just jumps up. He's really on the limit. You can see the wheel kind of wiggling. And just searching for the line, this is a really, really tricky section, I have to say, because it just is never ending. So it's a tough one. And that coupled with the pit wall there, the most dangerous point in the track, I don't blame the guys for searching and taking the extra bit of time. So into the break point and break zone in turn, well, turn one, the actual turn one, um, a lot more confident. Still searching for the grip mid corner, but um, lots of speed through this section. on the brakes into the ABS. You can see he's actually braking quite hard. So that's good to see. Shows a little sign of confidence. Braking hard and utilizing the full capability. 
carrying good speed through the section. Down the gear, I like to see this. You can see, just watch the wheel wiggle. Back and forth. Didn't quite set up enough for this final chicane. But uses a lot of road on exit, which is actually really nice to see. It could be pretty daunting to use all the road because you don't know if it's flat out through that bend. Just really using all the revs. Hard on the brakes. A little slow through that bend, uh, but actually <laughs> compared to what I did, but compared to everyone else, really, really solid and a great lap actually so far. I'm pretty sure you guys can see the jump in performance compared to the other laps as, as well. So there it is. That's his reference time. That was Wayne Castile's reference lap, 5.5K I rating. And as you'd expect, another jump forward in speed. 145.99, that's only 8.5 seconds off of my reference point. And he actually did a really good job. It surprised me, I have to say. With, with only seven laps on the board, to be eight and a half seconds off is pretty awesome. Considering Wayne was uh, a, like a one and a half K I racer about a year and a half or two years ago. So to see him make that huge jump forward in performance and you know increase his I rating and also it reflecting in his real life speed is really nice to see. Let's move forward. We're gonna take a look at our next driver and one of the coaches for the Moradness M squad. He's rated at 6,000 I rating, but in reality, he just doesn't have the time to put in to driving in official races to get his rating up. It's Giuliano Romagnolo. Let's see how he fares behind the wheel of a race car. This will be his first time behind a race car. Now we're riding on board with Giuliano Romagnolo. 6,000 I rating, starting the reference lap. A lot lighter on the brake already into this first bend. You can see the level of confidence is is high, carrying a lot of speed and way wider than we've seen from anybody else. So a much better attack and a, an angle towards this section of the track where it's a switch back onto the front straight. So already really good speed. And funny enough, I will say that this wasn't his final lap. His final lap was actually four tenths slower than his second to last lap. And you'll see why at the very end of this reference lap. Good speed, really confident, carrying the speed over the crest, light braking, back to pretty aggressive power. You can see him hard on the brakes, ABS, rear locking all the way in. You can see that blue light on the dash. Little bit on the slow side there under driving that carousel and not using all the track you can see how he momentarily pauses before the turn and meaning he could have used more track same thing here he could have used more of that exit but he's not sure if he can go flat out around this bend it is tricky and it's a bit nerve-wracking especially when you have barely any laps behind the wheel so flat out he's going to get up to fifth gear light on the brakes look at the speed difference he's carrying a lot of speed now down the gears and into one of the tighter corners. Oh, and he loses the rear. Nearly lost it. And the reason he lost it like that is because he was in coast. He basically broke, released the brake, and the rear axle got really, really light. But anyway, saved it. And that's why he went slower on the next lap. That's his reference. Giuliano's lap was really quick. And I think that if he didn't have that moment, maybe he could go even quicker on his final lap. He ended up going four tenths slower than than this reference lap, but Giuliano turned a 143.2. That's only 5.7 seconds off of my time. Now we're getting close. This is the part where it gets really difficult, but again, not many laps on the board for these guys. So it is really impressive to see these lap times and it goes to show you that if they can drive on the sim, then more or less it's translating to the real car. They're feeling confident and comfortable. The only difference is, and you can see it with this particular example, is when you have a moment, it could potentially set you back. And not many of the guys got to that point where they felt like they had a moment that really scared them. And I'm not saying that Jules got scared, but subconsciously it does hit your confidence. 
And that's something you have to take into account. Going to a real car, there are real dangers. So when you have a moment like that and you're faced with a real danger, you start to question and think about what you're doing a little bit more. Whereas in the virtual world, you crash the car, you just hit reset and you go again. But our final driver is Nate Olson. He is the high, highest rated driver in the team. He's one of the highest rated drivers on the service in the uh, top 1000 comfortably at 8,000 I rating. And for those that know the I rating system, that's a really difficult level to get to. Let's see if 8,000 I rating equals the fastest lap. Jumping on board with Nate Olson. Let's see how he does. Crossing the stripe or the reference mark. 8,000 plus I rating. So a little less confident and you can visually see less minimum speed. Although he's building the speed at the end of this carousel and right at this point, it seems to be actually a bit quicker than Giuliano. So a little bit of a trade-off. Whereas Jules carried a lot of speed in and slowed down, Nate actually built the speed through. So actually carried some pretty good minimum speed at the apex, but a lot more tentative on throttle. You see, just actually struggling with the rear, pointing the car before squeezing the power in. So he had a little bit of a moment on exit. Not quite as wide as what we've seen, and he's gonna struggle over that crest, which means his minimum speed's gonna drop. So a little bit too much of a sacrifice here, I would say. So line-wise and track knowledge, just I mean, even in a few laps, you should be able to pick up on the correct lines and the flow rhythm of the track. Does a little bit of a better job through the first chicane, but pinches off the second one a little bit too much. So I noticed Nate's not really using all the RPM. I think he's afraid of running it on that pipe. <laughs> so really early on the brakes, a lot lower minimum speed. You can just see that visually. And when you can see it with your naked eye, it means it's quite a bit slower. Really tidy though, really tidy in the double right and good power application. Let's see how he does across the reference point. Let's have a look at his lap time. This is the part of our little experiment I was looking forward to the most, to know if the highest rated iRacer in this group, Nate Olson, 8,000 I rating, would be the quickest. So Nate turned a 145.7. That's 8.3 seconds off my reference time and two and a half seconds off of Giuliano Romagnolo's time. So it goes to show you that I rating doesn't exactly line up one to one with speed. Nate was only two tenths of a second clear of Wayne Castile, who has 5.5K I rating. And the rest of the group was all over the place. I mean, we had 16 guys on track and take a look at this list. I mean, we only took a, a sample of six of them in this experiment. And you can see that the list is all over the place in terms of I rating versus speed. And that was the question we asked when we started this video. Does I rating equal real life speed? I think based on this test, it doesn't. There are so many factors that will influence how the sim driver is feeling behind the wheel. There are real dangers and fears when you strap into a race car. When you're doing 250, 260 kilometers an hour and there's a concrete wall in front of you, it's a little bit of a different experience than if you're on your sim at home and you can just hit reset after testing the limit 42 times there are no resets in real life and although the guys only had six or seven laps it was a really good test to see how comfortable they were right away coming from a sim going into a real car and if their skill level actually translated to real lap time now i want to know what you guys think about this test do you think that it was fair the way i did it the way i lined it up uh, i want to know how you think these guys would do if they had another 20 laps behind the wheel. Do you think that they would close that gap to the reference time? For me, I feel like it would be difficult. It's impossible to tell because I know that in the sim, the closer you get to the reference point, the harder it becomes. I know most of you can relate to this. When you're five seconds off, it's really easy to get within one second. 
But then when you're one second off those pro guys, it's so hard to find that last second because you're looking for tenths of a second everywhere. And in racing at the top level, tenths of a second, hundredths of a second make a difference. I know you guys can appreciate that from sim racing or watching real racing on TV. The times are close. And although these guys did such a great job, I'm really curious to see if they had more time behind the wheel where they'd actually end up. Now, you made it this far in the video. I know you loved it. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel because I have a ton of videos about this topic. We're gonna try to keep doing stuff like this. We even have a video uh, about the Houston trip where you know we, we take you through the whole experience. So um, just an amazing opportunity. Can't thank Windward Racing enough and really looking forward to hearing what you guys think about this video down below in the comments and I'll speak to you uh, down there. We'll see you in the next video.